So in one of the more recent videos I had just released, I had provided a proof on how to take the derivative of e to the x using implicit differentiation. In this video, I'll be providing a quick proof on how to take the derivative of e to the x using the limit definition of the derivative, which is essentially the limit as h approaches 0 for f of x plus an arbitrary amount, uh, increase in x, which we'll denote as h. So f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. That is the lim limit definition of the derivative, and that's what we'll be proving in this video. So if we wanted to take the derivative of e to the x, the way we would set this up is we will take the limit as h approaches 0 for e to the, and wherever it is that we see x in our initial function, we will substitute in x plus h. So this will be e to the x plus h. And then we will subtract off e to the x. And then the entire thing will be divided by h. Now e to the x plus h can be rewritten as a product of two different functions. It's going to be e to the x and e to the h. Because whenever it is that you multiply two things with common bases, essentially what you'll do is you will add their exponents. So this will be e to the x times e to the h. So this will be limit as h approaches 0 for e to the x times e to the h minus e to the x, all divided by h. Now we have a common factor that can be pulled out. So we can factor out an e to the x. So this will be the limit as h approaches 0 for e to the x times e to the h minus 1 over h. Now the limit of the product is going to be the product of the limits, so we can split this up into two different limits altogether. So this becomes the limit as h approaches 0 for e to the x times the limit as h approaches 0 for e to the h minus 1 over h. Now as h approaches 0, e to the x is completely unaffected. It doesn't change anything whatsoever. So this e to the x will remain as it is. However, the really tough part about this proof is essentially proving that e to the h minus 1 over h as h approaches 0 is equal to 1. A lot of people will prove that it is equal to 1 using L'Hopital's rule, but L'Hopital's rule will go ahead and make the assumption that you already know that the derivative of e to the h is e to the h. So I'm going to completely avoid using that method altogether because it pretty much completely defeats the purpose of this proof. So essentially functions can be represented as series. If you happen to know a little bit of calculus too, then you'll know that every function can be represented as a series and that the series for e to the h will essentially look a little something like this, where it is that you will have sigma n equals 1, no, n equals 0, ends at infinity, and e to the h becomes x to the, or rather not x, this actually becomes h in this case. This will become h to the n divided by n factorial. So essentially the first few terms of this series will be starting at 0 and then moving towards infinity. This will be n equals 0. This becomes h to the 0 over 0 factorial. So h to the 0 is equal to 1. Then we will add on n equals 1. So h to the 1 over 1 factorial. This becomes h over 1 or 1 factorial if you'd like. And then it continues adding on and on and on. This will become h squared over 2 factorial, dot, 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 and it'll essentially go on forever and ever. So what we want to do is we want to substitute in this series expansion into our limit. Now I'm going to need to make a little bit of space over here. So let's go ahead and ignore this e to the x right over here, and let's just assume that we want to evaluate the limit as h approaches 0 for e to the h minus 1 over h. So this will be the limit as h approaches 0 for, and e to the h, essentially what we can do is we can substitute in this whole mess for e to the h. So this will be 1 plus h over 1 factorial plus h squared over 2 factorial, blah, blah, blah. And we will have minus, and then we will subtract off 1, all divided by h. So essentially what we've got here is we can cancel off these 1s over here. 
So let me go ahead and rewrite this to make things a little bit clearer. As h approaches zero, all that we've got left over is going to be h over one factorial. However, h over one factorial is just equal to h. So this will be h plus h squared over two factorial plus h to the third over three factorial, blah, 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 goes on forever, divided by h. And this can be split up into several different limits where it is that the limit of the sum is the sum of the limits. So this will be, notice how the limit as h approaches zero for h divided by h plus the limit as h approaches zero for h squared over two factorial over h. Now notice that all of these terms are going to go straight to zero as h approaches zero. However, h over h is going to be equal to one. It will always be equal to one. So essentially everything else will go straight to zero and h over h will remain one. So that is essentially the proof that limit as h approaches zero for e to the h minus one over h is equal to one. So now let's just tie it all back together. We will take the limit as h approaches 0 for e to the x times the limit as h approaches 0 for e to the h minus 1 over h, which we had just proved was equal to 1. So this becomes 1. And as h approaches 0 for e to the x, e to the x stays exactly the same, which is e to the x. So in the end, we have e to the x multiplied by 1 and that is e to the x. And that is the painfully long and annoying derivation of the limit definition of the derivative of e to the x. Hope you enjoyed. I had a really tough time figuring this one out, truth be told.